Buongiorno e benvenuti. Welcome to Art Yoga Pills with me, your host, Dinni. In this space we will connect and share together about creativity, inner child and self-awareness. Siete pronti? Enjoy! Ciao a tutti, kia ora, and welcome to a new episode of Art Yoga Pills. Today I have with me a very special guest, Matt Pihema. How are you, Matt? Very good, thank you, Lina. Kia ora, Tato, to all those listening. Great to be here. Yeah, I'm feeling already a little bit overwhelmed. Usually our conversation going the other way around, where, where you are my host with, uh, with our classmates. So it's interesting for me now to be, to be the one leading our conversation and... Uh, and hopefully it will be inspired as much as it was for me uh, during this year together. And uh, just as a backup for those who are just listening and wondering what I'm talking about, um, I have with me today my Kayako. This year I've been studying Manaki Tangata in the Maori School Te Wanangawa Otearoa to gain my certificate in uh, Bicultural Social Services. And now that I finally finish and accomplish my, my journey, I'm curious to switch role and get to know Matt through this opportunity so that I can extend what I gain from, from him to all my listeners and hoping that this conversation will be inspiring for them as well. So welcome, Matt, for, uh, for this challenge that I've been uh, uh, offering ourselves this morning and, and see how this conversation might lead me to get to know you a little bit better and inspiring people as well through your journey. Hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Elenia, for having me. It's a it's a privilege to be in your space. And so, you know, uh, with that being said, I'm excited. Uh, I'm happy to share and um, just wananga between myself and, and and just see where the conversation leads and takes us in the space of Modi. So, kia ora. Kia ora, Matt. And I guess that my first question for you, it should be easy, but I realized that it could, could be could be considered very deep questions. So I, I will try to make it light, but feel free to acknowledge mm. it the way that comes to you today. And my first question for you is, who is Matt? And feel free to who go is... personal, professional, or mixing the two together. Mm. What a great question. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. And uh, what I've come to realize is that, well, not just realize, but except for myself personally, is that I am I'm happy being the clay in the potter's hands. And for a lot of people, who is the potter? That's a great question. And you know, the fact that I'm clay in the hands of a of a greater creator um, excites me. And so I feel that when I was young, I was um, well, I am a son to a beautiful Cook Island woman, Cook Island Tahitian, and then I'm also a son to uh, my father, who is of Maori and European descent, uh, but me as a as as a as an individual, as a as a person, Matt is forever expanding his ability to grow, learn, share, experience, connect, develop, and explore. And for me to say that I have reached my destination would be a sad statement. So I'm excited that I'm still, I'm still, I'm moving in different spaces, but who I am today is that I am, I am built for service. Uh, today, I feel that I have purpose in my heart. I have gratefulness in my spirit. I have a spring in my step. And those get me through the daily routines of just facing life with others um, in that experience. Um, but I'm privileged to be in this space as a kayako, as you've mentioned. Uh, teaching Manaki Tangata and um, leading those in the same exploration of self-discovery, uh, whether it's individual, collective. And so that in itself is, uh, I guess, the the sense of wonder that keeps me looking beyond the horizons every morning. I hope that isn't too, what's the word? I hope it isn't too mystical, but in an, yeah, that's, I can't define myself if that makes sense. I find it very hard to define myself means I'm a finished product, in my opinion. And so when I leave the room open and I leave it, when I leave the space of who I am open, I can define myself in many threads and many scenarios and spaces. And 
I think that's been beneficial to me and my lived experiences. Wow, thank you, Matt. I think that you haven't touched too much into the spiritual as this podcast. I'm I'm hoping that gives the same vibes of connection beyond what we can define with our senses and go a little bit deeper to even as replying to what it could look like a simple question as who are we and mm. going a little bit beyond the the idea that might connect us to certain labels, but even uh, exploring our our journey without a necessarily a destination is something that I truly appreciate in this space. So thank you for that. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. But I guess that, of course, you mentioned that there is no final destination, but I'm truly curious to know about your journey into this realm, into being a kayako and for such a important topic to me, which is Manaki Tangata. And I wonder how was your journey um, that led you to this path? If you if you always knew within yourself that you were born to to be at service of um, us, for us uh, as uh, human beings, or if it's something that you develop through your curiosity, exploring the world, facing your up and down, your challenges, how did you came into this path, basically? Uh, although yeah. basically, it's, it doesn't <laughs> probably define like the journey itself for you. Yeah, well, no, I think you've you, you've highlighted a few um, uh, crucial points in, in my curiosity. Um, being an open, uh, being open to different pathways has allowed me to really um, identify new skills within myself. Skills that I already knew I had, but I didn't realize to the broad of their influences that it could actually influence and and really make positive shifts in people, but uh originally troubled youth that's that's how i started troubled youth trying to figure out things on my own uh without really any guidance i had to adapt to the world very quickly and identify what worked for me what didn't who i wanted to be and who i didn't want to be and um i started working with youth uh but the only issue i had was i was su suffering and not suffering struggling with the same identified issues that a lot of youth are discredited and therefore make other choices outside of the mainstream education, such as learning difficulties. So I had uh, visual dyslexia, uh, which is there's three uh, different threads of it, but for mine it was just hard for me to to identify visual and sound together. And so a lot of the times I was guessing or memorizing, uh, but once I understood uh, my learning barriers, I was able to implement um, strategies to help me go forward. And so I decided, man, there's a lot of youth that struggle in the same in the same aspects. And if you don't feel competent, then you're going to do something totally opposite of, you know, what what would actually benefit you. So if I couldn't feel that if I felt like I was not fitted for studies and stuff, then I would look outside of other options. And usually the options in in certain communities. And if you grew up in a community like mine, those options were limited to sort of. Um, illegal and you know, um, situations that would really not bring the best surroundings into your space. So with that being said, fast tracking, um, I wanted to work with youth and I was privileged enough to, to work with youth voluntarily, went into studies, decided that I needed to, as much as I was helping them step and level up into breaking through what their barriers were initially in the start and coming through, I realized that I had more um, I had more areas in my life that I needed to take ownership of and lead myself into those spaces as well. So it, um, I came into the Wananga in 2015 as pastoral care. It was a great, great opportunity for me working with um, high-risk youth, struggling around education. And then unfortunately, we lost the contract working with youth. So then I was redeployed into adult teaching. Uh, and I, did, I didn't want to initially take it up. I just didn't think it was beneficial me working with adults. I just thought they're, they're kind of one-minded. Once they sit in their, their mind states, it's hard to deviate them into a different pathway, whereas youth, they're at a crossroads. That was my understanding at the time, that if I can meet them at the crossroads, maybe I can present other options they've yet to, to identify that would be a better pathway for them going forward. Uh, but however, um, unknown to me that it would, it would lead me into a space of teaching. And in this space, I feel 
that it has given me uh, the skills and the tools that I need to, again, what has been um, resonating within my heart and stuff is that the power of influence, you know, it's, but the motive behind it and the alternative behind it can kind of diminish that, that kind of influence if it's self-retained. Um, but my, my, my understanding of the power of influence is that you can change lives, you can change communities, you can change the homes of which a lot of these children who are being um, neglected and, and, you know, under some worse situations. So my whole, my whole reason for doing what I'm doing is that I believe it's every child's right to be raised in a happy home. So I'm about restorations in the family home, about restoring the family picture and about helping individuals take ownership of their contribution in that space and what that looks like. So, yeah. Wow, what a wonderful journey. I Throughout the year, I had the chance to listen to some of this path that led you to where you are, but it's quite inspiring to me to extend this, um, this knowledge that I gained through you also to those who have no clue that becoming a teacher might come also with certain struggles that are personal, uh, defined by who we are, but also the society that we are living in. And, and so having th this opportunity to to listen to your career and, and knowing that there is way more that we can uh, uh, discover about someone when we give ourselves that opportunity, we can find also some inspiration for some things that we don't feel like ready for uh, in mm. terms of uh, challenges that life is presenting us either in a, in a positive way or in a negative way. And knowing that both options has so much um available to us in terms of learning experience either if we are doing it in a personal way either if we are going towards a more professional way as for your case and i really want to acknowledge also the the visual and the the struggle in reading words which is something that you know when you think about a teacher you never see that um aspect of a struggle that a teacher might need to face too and and having that awareness that um, is a beautiful way to me to to acknowledge also um, what, how we can turn a struggle into our strength and defining alternative ways to become um, empowered by by what we can improve within ourselves without necessarily like the the skills that the world has uh, ready for us to to lead on to. So yeah, I want to acknowledge this from your sharing as well, which to me is super powerful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess for me, it, it was initially hard when I first started my first year teaching, teaching adults. I was like, oh, we got to write on the board. My writing is not that bad, but I still, when I get nervous, when, when nerves kick in, it can really take away your confidence. And when your confidence is, is being withdrawn, it can trigger you back into a default state. And so in my first year writing on the board, I was thinking I'm not fit for teaching. Um, you know, I'm I'm already getting nervous, panic sweats kicking in as I'm writing on the board. And you know, I hear a few chuckles and it and it just instantly by by nature we refer back to default. And I was going back to a time back in school, getting laughed at when I tried to read. So initially uh, I, I had to wrestle with a lot of my own insecurities and remind myself um of the very thing that I told my youth in those many years that, you know, um don't be ashamed of what you have, but know that what you have is more than enough. And so initially in, in the classroom, I thought, okay, I'm just going to put it out there. Sorry, guys, you know, my spelling, because I thought if they see me, my spelling isn't right, they might question or doubt the validity of my teaching abilities. And so, you know, with that being said, I was, as much as I wanted to be a great Kayako, I was internally still struggling in the initial stages. And we all do when we take on something new, but we know that we were we were fit for purpose in that space. We will initially we need to discover who we are again in that space and reestablish our footing. And so, um, I come to very, I come to a realization that it's okay, you know, because my understanding was what you said. A teacher should know everything. Should have, you know, we just assume. And I thought, well, let me not lie to these guys from the start. It'd be bad if I'm trying to pretend something I'm not. So, and on my first day. I said, look, guys, this is my story. I, I struggle from visual dyslexia, but it doesn't take away from my comprehension. I know this thing. I know this space. And the students' support and their ability to trust their learning with me 
just help me. Uh, and it was just funny because as soon as I, I, I showed myself to be, you know, without masquerading something that I wasn't, the students were able to open up more to me and I felt comfortable and I don't think I struggled too much with the, um, with writing on the board again. I might've missed one or two words here and there, but the students were, if anything, they said to me, Matt, thank you for doing that. When you show a kink in your armor, we just thought you were, you know, there was no faults in, in teachers. And I said, look, I, I don't, I don't assume to know at all or, or be in a position that I know more than you guys or that I am, I know what is right for this class. I need your guys' support in this space. And that's how we were able to connect in. Um, hence why I love the program, because it's not relied just on my experience. It allows everybody to bring their lived experience into a space. And that helped build my confidence. So I was very grateful to my first year students. It could have been a make or break, but the key was, and that's when I started I shared, started sharing that fakatoki, share your heart, not your weapons. I uh, just came out of that one. And so when I shared my hearts with them and they 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 took that on board and they're like, thank you for doing that. Because a lot of us have the similar issues and we didn't think we'd make it through. And so together we all made it through. And that was the benefit of uh, just being open, open communication and not having to, um, I'm not one for chasing titles, but a pe some people assume that the title of a teacher holds a certain prestige to it. And so I just want them to know, no, I'm human just like you. I have faults. I only see what I see. You know, I don't. I don't have the whole whole perspective on everything. But with your eyes and my eyes, we can see things a lot more better. So that's been my my outlook, I guess. Yeah, and I can see as a student that the experience was the same for me, knowing that I had the support of a human being, not uh, as someone that excelled better than me in something, but that we had within uh, our group also reciprocal. Um, acknowledgement for our inner wisdom and how we were bringing it into the table so truly appreciate even the fact that as an adult going back to study there is a certain pressure because you know you are supposed to have done this many years ago and and now being already in your path so having also that ability of going back to that student place but doing it in a slightly different way than when we when I was younger back in Italy, but I will assume that in many places where education needs to be done before your journey to work uh, instead of the other way around uh, was really good because it just allowed me to to acknowledge something new from mm. someone in that case such as you, you know, like hosting the space for us, but with inclusiveness so that it didn't feel like that we were like less than or the same for you like that because you were teaching us as adults, there, there was some some unbalance. Um, it felt like quite beautiful to me to be held within a space with such a profound wisdom, but that was shared, not necessarily inclusively from you, but also giving us the possibility of knowing that there was such a wisdom also for us to share, even if we were not aware yet at that time. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I love, I love what, Every year presents itself. Every year presents a new, a new perspective, and you know I'm starting to learn and differentiate the difference between my perspective and my perception. And so, perspective is my own individual outlook on life. My perception is built on such as yourself and others in the class has brought in my perception to see things from other people's perspectives, to feel it too. Uh, and I think that's really crucial in this space because it allows you to um, express empathy, true empathy, compassion. These are things that um, help a person understand that you meet them where they're at and that you can um, you can build not only meaningful relationships and respectful relationships, which we learn, but like you can almost build uh, a strong sense of purpose within a person that the ripple effects of what they do afterwards is quite astounding and I've been privileged enough to be in a space where um, in in areas where I've only just been a, a directing point but they've taken on the challenge themselves and what they're doing in their life has just been um, 
significantly empowering for myself because I understand from their pers their perspective um, what they went through and now my perception has gone a, a lot more bigger because it's 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 important that we understand the power of unity like I was talking to someone the other day and we were talking about what is the most powerful human trait we have and and, and I guess using te ao Māori words and someone said te aroha I said I don't know everyone uses that one te aroha that's a good one but in my my observation I've learned that kotahitanga unity because I've seen people with great love but that love doesn't necessarily mean that it goes beyond just what they know. It stays more in a safe space with those they 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 understand that they are connected with. So even though they have great love, this love that is quite admirable, it's it's sometimes inclusive or exclusive. You have to know them to ex have that love. Whereas kotai tanga, in order for kotai tanga unity to be really thing, people have to have this embedded and love is just not like just feelings or it's a, it's a commitment it's a choice to stay through the hardships and what i've what i've been blessed to see is that uh people everyone loves somebody in the program you know every student i love my mom i love my dad i love my sisters i love my brothers that's great my objective is not to think love because we know how to we just draw to it naturally like moths to a flame my thing is helping people see the power of kotahitanga unity um, and that doesn't necessarily have to have the same um, thing like as if I love my immediate family. So if I have kotaitanga unity with you and unity with you, there is a thread of love. And that helps, I think, really change um, and supports um, the need of our communities today. And so being a part of that has been a privilege for me. And uh, I will extend just like the privilege to me as well. Well, just with the with your sharing now, I I just suddenly realized how important it was for me. You know, like in uh, the many courses that the Wananga Otero offer, was easily you know from a Maori point of view deciding to go and and learn language, just the language itself. But what I really want to acknowledge of my journey through Manaki Tangata is that. I had the possibility as an European and as a Pakia to to truly dive deeper into the knowledge that extend to what I'm hoping that the world will learn from our own family, but yet that might not be the chance for everyone to have that experience. And so even as a grown up to to bring my motivation in learning something more about the culture in which I decide from the land in which I decide to live in. It gave me so much more to think about um, in terms of connection, protection, mm -hmm. uh, positive, uh, positive attitude, positive um, affirmation, also becoming guardian of one another. It's it's all concept that they are absolutely not new to me at all. It's just mm -hmm. like a reinforcement of something that has some, somehow got lost within within the track of my path. And through the knowledge of this land and uh, through the knowledge of what you've been sharing with us, I feel that my capacity of, of understanding myself and the ripple effect that I can create to the world around me is so much more powerful and mm. goes now also beyond like the family that I am. Um, it's my birth family. It's the family that I've been creating along my journey, but now it's extending also to those who I don't know yet. And I guess that this is also one of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing. I, I don't have truly like an identity of who is listening to this, like to, to have a physical a person that that uh, is, I, I am trying to direct these messages to, but having the conscious that, that someone out there might be inspired by our words is so powerful to, to know that we can create that invisible connection, even when mm -hmm. we are not able to, to truly see and, um, and feel physically who is behind, beyond uh, the headphones listening and acknowledging and experiencing perhaps also the unity and the love that we are trying to to share through our messages, through our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I find it hard to cast judgment over people because of that same 
philosophy and belief that I have is that people are forever changing. I hear I hear people use things like, oh, she's fake or he's fake. And I said, is that really a true statement? Because, you know, who you are today isn't who you were 10 years ago. You know, and we hit different milestones in our lives where it forces us, not forces us, but it requires us to change. Nature changes, everything in cycle changes. But people think that when someone, and sometimes when you're becoming a, a better version of yourself or you're in the process of, you might actually um, add attributes and stuff that aren't fitted yet, but you're filtering them out. Say, oh, I'm not. I'm not that way inclined. I don't like lots of makeup. I don't want to wear all this. I thought I did, but now it's not my fit. And so people are in the process of your evolution and, de and, and development. People are always, not always, sorry, and I shouldn't generalize, but at times people will look into your space and think and, 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 and cast a judgment on what they think is, is developing. Um, I don't wear that anymore. Because I accept the fact that uh, who I am in this season is who I am. Who I am in the next season of my life, I hope that what I'm doing now helps me better myself for that season, that I'm prepared for it. Um, so I'm, I, am, I am appreciative to, to just, just people trying to do put their best foot forward. What I don't appreciate is people who sit on the sideline and want to chop people off at the feet um, before they can even, you know, um, ex express and experiment, uh, experiment with who they are. And I think it's really important part of uh, growing is to, to explore the different spaces of not just yourself, but in terms of the different relationships in, and, um, cultural settings and ethnicities to get a better understanding of actual people connections and life and what you'll find is that the way you used to think is not the way you you would think now it changes it changes and i feel for people who want to stay in the box stay in that comfortable zone like look at your your own example leaving home you've met so many people so many different cultures but there are those that you grew up with in your childhood that would never have that perspective or perception on life outside of you know uh, Italy and so forth and so um I I take my hat off to to people like yourself I don't have that inclined sense of that 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 kind of adventure but my adventure is more in a, in a small space where I'm I'm inspired by someone like yourself who wants to go beyond just uh you know your own nation but into many other nations and exploring and, and thing and so i think it's a i learn as as others bring their learning into myself into my space so hmm. mm, thank you matt for acknowledging that and i was actually thinking exactly the same like how how do we continuing investigating ourselves and being curious about how ourself beyond what we've been defining perhaps even by ourselves like we are um getting attached to this idea of our own identity and for myself included for many years before I start traveling I found that I had uh, the right path to follow and I was never expecting that it had broke into pieces at some point and led me to the other side of the world to better understand myself and for me that was my transformational journey but I'm also aware that that might not be the path that everybody wished to take on board to understand more about themselves and playing with the idea of change the change that is within ourselves even five minutes ago I'm not longer the person that I am now in this present moment and I'm I'm truly valuing like what you were sharing about the change that is constantly happening and uh, it would be a uh, easier i guess to let that happen in in our life although sometimes we experience so much resistance and uh, for for someone like you that i can see that even if you decide not to travel the whole world you gain something within yourself that allow you to be open to explore the world and to to reduce the amount of judgment that we might have also towards the world and and perhaps also against ourselves that sometimes that is the biggest portion of uh, criticism and judgment. So I wonder, from your personal experience, what was the key element that uh, supported you throughout this whole journey, even when you were facing challenges, to to kind 
to kind of having that inner sense as you have right now to know that you are planting now the seeds and you're still nourishing those seeds for them to become uh, yet another ber better version of yourself in the nearest mm. future. So I wonder what was the key for you to, or, or the core elements that always um, were within yourself that supported you in your, in your challenges, but also in your greatest moment without the necessarily feeling of needing to leave your own country to, to discover all of that. Mm. Yeah, um, I would say for me it was my greatest challenges. Uh, and they came in many forms, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Um, these challenges, I didn't welcome them uh, initially, but what I didn't realize is that it was like a, a furnace kind of experience. And so... I felt like I was going through the furnace and everything that I was comfortable, that was a part of my makeup that I had identified that this is me, was challenged under the fire. And what was left was was gold. And it was identifying what produced the gold in me was my my ability to keep hoping, uh, to believe in myself was, was what was left because I had to burn away the doubts and the fears and the insecurities and the, even the comforts of my own space to be able to venture out again. Um, and a lot of it was more around the battlefield of the mind. I think that's what helped me the most. It was conquering my own, my own understanding of myself in the world, the world around me and those I wanted to love and protect. And with that, I realized that if I can if I, if I can believe in myself enough to make changes, then and those who know me would see that and I, it would be a testament rather than just me um, trying to convince them otherwise, it would be an example for them to follow. And so that was a drive. But I would say, yeah, my what people don't realize is that in your darkest hours, you usually find the brightest light. And I don't wish that upon anybody, to be honest. It's not ideal. It's it's a funny principle in life when they tell you, because you come face to face with a lot of ugly truths. And a lot of those ugly truths, you now are faced with a decision and a choice. And that's what helped me understand. And in certain situations, I was like, surely I've suffered enough. I have to make more hard choices. I have to sacrifice more. I have to give up a lot more. But what I realized is that um, if you love your life too much that you stay inside a bubble, then it's a boring life. But if you love your life enough to sacrifice it for the greater good of others and yourself, then what you'll find is you'll find a lot more trouble, but in that you, it's you'll find a lot more victories. And so I realized that, that I was... I was gifted enough to be able to, and they don't tell you, they don't teach you this in school that, or in, in life in general, and well, in, in upbringings that, um, that a lot of the, a lot of the emotional trauma that you face is actually just a, a, a concept within your own. Um, mental or, or, or within your own mental and emotional welfare that I guess if that imprisons us and so if you understand yourself enough and you can um, mend those a lot of times we look to the either the person who perpetrated us or affected us or did these things to us to to be able to release us from that I had to learn the ability of self-validation even against my perpetrators and once I realized that, uh, and I and I accepted my own words, you know how we can say things and we don't accept it. We're just hoping that one day it will just connect with our minds and our hearts. Uh, all of a sudden, I realized that actually those, that connection, that, that special connection with myself is crucial for every other stage in life. And so I've had to go into that state of mind many times into studies and into my own, um, into my own spaces where I've felt less than. And I've had to remind myself of those experiences. 
Yeah, I resonated extremely with the with the challenges. The challenges to me are also what has supported me to to grow personally, and uh, but also the fact that it's so easy to 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 blame other people for the situation in which we are finding ourselves, and uh, finding a little bit of that victimism within ourselves, even not purposely. Uh, yes. that uh, stop us to be motivated enough to to do something good for ourselves in our own terms, even by facing challenges and, and possibly even the fear of the unknown, because of course we don't know yet how to get out of certain situations that stop us to move forward. But certainly, even in those darkest moments, there is such a growth that um, mm. it's possible when we um, possibly, in our own way, in our own terms, and... Um, Taking it as it comes, also the the accept the being having acceptance in uh, in those situations, which sometimes like how do I need to accept those things that are so terrible to me and accepting them might be even just like to say okay, right now I'm here. <laughs> what else mm. I should do? You know, I, I, just stay here for a little bit and see what this led me to, and that might look like acceptance from time to time, but also like the the opposite. So fighting and see what else what motivation can support me to move forward now that I'm stuck right here so I truly want to acknowledge also the, the this part that it might not often come um, as an authentic way in which we are sharing ourselves like trying to hide the bed and just mm. giving, uh, giving all the beauty to, to the m- most encouraging and uh, awesome moment of our life but also acknowledging those other um, gray and dark and shady moments are also those ones mm. if we have the possibility to acknowledge them so much to give us so yeah absolutely, absolutely. resonating yeah I think they 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 overlook they're the most defining times for a lot of people but a lot of times we attach it to the hurt the pain um and you know the the realization of letting go is is quite daunting and, and and the power of fear is attached to it. And so even in that sense, it can it could be in in terms of in hindsight, we can see it as um it was just a, a whispering thought, but in the moment itself it can sound like clashing symbols because it's so loud that 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 ability to be um stirred in a way that feels uncomfortable and unsettling can cause us to make irrational decisions and choices within. And I'm still learning to be able to embrace my fears, know that um, it develops perseverance, it produces character, um, it reveals to me uh, areas in my life which I can improve in. And at the same time, I like facing my fears. I like facing, to not to see what I'm made of, but to... To know that um, that I don't like to leave, like in, in my in my now current kind of thinking, I don't like leaving any stone unturned. Um, I was talking to my son last night, and we were talking, and he was talking about and time he was embarrassed at school, and he got quite. And we're talking about emotional intelligence and trying to teach him how to um, think into that space at a, at a at an understanding that he could understand. And in that conversation, I, we were talking about something, and I said, you know, I'm. I'm glad, and, and even my son, he was talking about bullies, and I said, you know, it's there's no one in my whole lived life that I think today I'd be actually surprised if someone could actually have um, a grudge or, or something against me that I've done in my past, and I hold that in high regards. I would actually be shocked and actually real sad knowing that if someone had something against me to this day, if they put out on the news, we got a million dollars for anyone who has a grudge against Matt, um, come forward. I would actually be literally, I'd be surprised and it would actually, it would, it wouldn't hurt me because I'm not trying to be the golden boy, but it would hurt me that someone holds an offense against me if I've created something unknowingly and I was not able to put it right Um, because I've had to put a lot of things right with an insecure um, person that I was in my own self. You know, I've gone back and I've mended a lot of past trauma and I've told myself it's okay and that has helped me. Um, to stand in where I am today, being being able to know that, you know, I accept people, as we, we said before, I accept my faults and failures. I accept uh, 
things that are outside of my control and accepting that has helped me accept others and their abilities. Even if I know that they are so far wrong, I am not going to throw them in, 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 and put them in a position where it exhorts myself above them because I have that. I mean, my thing is not about being right in, in, in a place of above people. Mine is being right beside people. That's that's how I like the thing. And if someone was to hold an offense against me, I'd actually be quite surprised. It would actually, I would be disappointed in myself that I did I overlook someone else's needs. I mean, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's a um, really beautiful reflection, even in terms of yourself and what you um, were able to to offer to people along your journey and, and connect them with. Um, so arriving in this point in our conversation, uh, I know that I have a final question, which I will leave there for, for the end. And I usually don't spoil it before. So it comes as naturally as possible for my guests to reply mm -hmm. to it. But before to arrive in there, I just would like to ask you if you feel like the using this opportunity of sharing something else that we haven't touched base to that you might use it as an opportunity to extend something additional to our listener that um yeah just using the opportunity for for knowledge is something that we haven't uh, acknowledged yet together and and see what might comes from there too not necessarily like with an obligation, of course, yeah. but just something oh. that we might not have a touch in um, in all this career so far. That's a tough question, um, only because my mind is quite, <laughs> quite. I can go from us. You can give me a seed, and I with in a conversation. If you don't uh, keep me on track, I will actually speak it to nearly every fruit there possibly is, and I struggle. Um, I struggle now because when you build an awareness, things aren't black and white anymore. I see a lot of the gray and the connections. And if you're listening, what has done this to me has been the concept of fucker papa, um, the origin of truth. And you know, just like one word has a thread to, I just I can't outfit, I can't not see it. There's a lot of times in my head I think, man, I need to simplify simplify things because the dialogues in my head i understand it but to explain it to others would be another episode itself <laughs> so i try to shorten my conversations and it frustrates me because a lot of times i don't get to i don't feel like i've sold it enough because it actually becomes it, it's actually a bit of a thesis and i'm trying to give everyone the short version so they don't have to go around the mountain they can come straight to the top and get a better perspective on things but i would say what we haven't like what I would like to for anyone who's listening is to not be afraid to express just all the emotions. I've expressed every emotion and I felt like that that you could possibly I don't know how many emotions there are in the human experience, but I feel like I've done them more that it's given me a better understanding of what I what I want in my life. So I've gone through depression as I've shared in the class and I share it openly and it's it doesn't taint me anymore. Uh, before, it used to be a thing. I mean, people hear depression and thinking, wow, sad story. But no, it was that in itself that revealed to me what I don't want in my life. And I sat in that bad boy for about a good six months. I didn't want to step out of it until I had really, a lot of times people want to subside it with drugs, alcohol and stuff. And just to, or find a new relationship with different reasons for whatever reasons to, to subsidize that depression. They want to bring other things in their life. I don't know why, but I decided to stay in it, stay in it for myself and just work it out on myself mentally. And what it what it did for me was uh, it made me realize how strong I really am. And it made me realize who I am and who I'm not. Um, and with that being said, I didn't realize that in in dark spaces, you can find new colors new textile colors, you know, so I was using the same colors, I guess, you know, in my own te whare tapawha, just the same, um, if you know, I've been this way before, I felt this emotion, it's quite yellowy, and so we just put yellow in that space and make it all bright colors, um, but when it was dark, you can't see those colors, I had to find new colors, new colors that shine in my darkness, and that allowed me to paint a new picture that never it shines in the darkness and the light. It's, you know, I can see it, 
I can visualize it. And for me, it was just, it was like, you are who you are. Nothing you do in the now or in the future would change that. But know who you are. And I said, like, well, then who am I? Please help me. Who am I? And it's like, you are who you are. Just accept that. I was like, I don't understand that question. So I had to sit on that for a bit. I am who I am. What does that mean? Like, so who am I? And it's like, you know, and I felt like I was going through a bit of a Jedi kind of thing. And I was given um, just this this word. And once I said, I am who I am, um, and I accepted that, I realized that I'm happy. I am today. So, you know, I am who I am. Meaning today I am trying to figure things out. But tomorrow I am uh, better for it. The next day I am all these different things. And so, oh, I feel like I'm having a last supper conversation and I wouldn't know what, what would be the, I think it's just knowing who you are, loving who you are. And that is, you know, that is not being afraid to, to step out of the waters and you know you might sink you might you might find yourself a little bit in um uncomfortable situations or your boat in itself might experience um rough terrains but i would say embrace it embrace it for what it is because fear will take away the experience of of it becoming um supplemented to your your ability to now navigate that space safely because if you don't know how to navigate and you get fearful in an experience and you run away if you face it again it, it would just bring you back into that space of fear and i've realized that okay i've been raised and it's i've been raised in a thing where you uh, you're being hurt physically you get physical harm if you do wrong now i'm having to learn it mentally because if i don't make the right choices means it can actually affect me emotionally and spiritually and those are the realms in which i'm trying to conquer and i'm still enjoying that journey and that process but for those who are listening self-discovery and understanding fucker papa and i'm not talking about just genealogy the origin of your truth that will help you discover a lot of things so hmm. Thank you so much, Matt. And thank you one more time as well for uh, diving deeper into something that it might not be as common to share, you know, something deeply within yourself, such as uh, your experience with depression, which is something that I wish to acknowledge because once again, it gives us the opportunity to realize that those darkest moments into our life might be the one that help us to understand ourselves better and navigating something different in, in a different way that we are used to and possibly with an outcome that can support us, us in our journey and uh, making different choices and nurturing ourselves in a slightly different way than the one that we are used to. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm grateful that my, my challenges and my struggles have been other people's strength because, you know, they've been encouraged by it. And so that's, the, that's, that's been a benefit in itself for me. Thank you so much for that. And I guess I will go for my final question, which is a little bit like uh, going towards what, what you've been uh, sharing so far. And my final question for you is just an invitation. So just take it as it comes and uh, just acknowledging what you wish to acknowledge in this question. Um, but it comes as an opportunity for a deeper connection with, with our listener, but also between me and you with uh, with mm. the opportunity of sharing, if you like, three empowering messages that you want to share with us today and that could be also a reminder for yourself a reminder for me and a reminder for whoever is present in this moment with us mm, three inspiring messages like there's so many but off the top oh it's just skipping my mind another one's trying to push itself in there i would say three inspiring messages is Oh, mm. you can go also for just one if you if three is too much sometimes people do that too <laughs> yeah like, share your heart is one i always say to people you know when you when you're looking at relationships with people and and family as well you know learn to we need learn to share your heart in a way that it's not like you know when you when you like somebody and you get all nervous and you're trying to share your heart with them, you know, i like you and you know those nerves um 
controlled controlled love is you know detaching the emotions and making it more logical but it still has the emotion just not the outlook of the emotions being seen you know when you're hugging and kissing it's being loving someone enough to say look if you don't agree with somebody then share your heart with them help them understand from your perspective so that they get a better perception um so i've always say share your heart not your weapons it's the best way to to win people over and to to draw a line so you that you know in safe practice okay i've shared my heart with you i shared exactly how i feel what helps you've stayed on that side now i can draw a line and you know i understand where the relationship sits then it's more of okay we just keep this space here and it helps us protect our our emotional welfare with when dealing with people so and you'll know when people aren't going to share their hearts because their words start piercing through and they're really pushing it through their agenda to really make you feel uncomfortable with where you sit so then um yeah i would say share your heart draw a line and understand that that's just them it's nothing on you and i find that that's quite easy without getting to attach and it helps it takes away the assumption people assuming oh matt should know well then let's talk about it share oh, i thought da 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 so that would be one. Two, what's another? I would say that yeah, I would say be be open to change. People who resist change usually find themselves um stuck and you know resisting resisting the the way in which the the, the tides turn and trying to trying to hold on to something that might not ever come. So, you know, sometimes change brings that. So I'd say be a bit to change. It's a really good thing. And finally, um, yeah, live your life. Make life work for you, not you work for it. I think it's important, you know. And what that means in your definition is what it means for you and your definition. But I can truly say that right now it is working for me, not me working for it. And I've been blessed to be given. Um, there was a time I had no opportunities of uh, employment or education, but I've been now been not poached, but I've been approached uh, to join other outfits. And it's good to be wanted, but Copopper keeps me here because I love what I do and it works for me too. You know, it's working for me in so many ways. So I'm very blessed. And yeah, with that being said, uh, thank you, Elenia, for having me. It was it was great having your lived and shared experience in our class and your energy was very um, pivotal in helping others come out. And as, as you've shared your lived experience, you've challenged not only myself, but others in the class and being of non-Maori descent and really appreciating and embarking on a, on a Te Ao Maori kaupapa has just uh, demonstrated your willingness to explore outside your own comfort zone. So I encourage everybody to do the same. And it's not just it's it's not just a Maori perspective. It's a humanity thing. And you know, let's not get it twisted. Maori don't have all the answers either. So I wouldn't say that it's in terms of culture, it's the most dominant part of the culture. Every culture has something significant that benefits to the human race. But I love my culture. But I'm of not just Maori descent. I'm of other descents, but um, I think that we can learn a lot. And just like um, I love food, you know, you, you need a lot of different ingredients and flavors. Otherwise, it comes becomes bland. And so I'm grateful that just like art, the many colors that paint the bigger picture is such a beautiful thing to behold and likewise in this space. So thank you so much, Elena, for having me. I hope that those who are listening, I didn't uh, bore you. I can tend to go around in circles. Thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate all the quarter that we've been sharing together. And uh, as you mentioned also, yeah, you mentioned that the Maori is not the only culture, but is um, one of the ancient cultures that to me is still uh, claiming their place into this present moment, into this, this modern life. And I found it really useful for me to go back to the origin from, from the Maori perspective to learn something that has been uh, somehow forgotten in our journey as human beings. So I really want to acknowledge your career, your time and space to be here with us today and, and sharing from your perspective how this journey led you to, to be 
uh, a kayako, but also for, for those who might feel inspired, like my recommendation as a now ex-student of uh, Tewananga Wauteroa is uh, just to dive into your own personal curiosity and uh, and pick whatever course might resonate with you in your own journey. But if Manaki Tangata is the one, mm. I highly recommend it because it truly broadened my my worldview uh, in terms of my own culture and my resistance to accept cer certain things of my culture, but also embracing all the other one that support me to see the world with different lenses and uh, mm. with more beauty and color, as you also mentioned. So thank you so much, Matt, for, for this opportunity. My pleasure. And if you ever need me now or in the near future, you can always call upon me. I'm always happy to come and aid you wherever. Thank you so much, Matt. I no really worries. appreciate. And uh, for everybody else who is listening, I will uh, share with you in the description of this episode the direct link to go and uh, dive more information in terms of the certificate in uh, bicultural social services. But even uh, if that might lead you to um, reach out directly to Matt for more information, even not possibly related to, to this course, but even with something that really strike for you in, in this conversation and supported you somehow to know something as, as using it as a mirror to, to see something about you. My recommendation is just doing it. So Matt, thank you so much once again. Well, and for you, everybody else, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Bye. Grazie per averci fatto compagnia. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. If you wish to stay updated and connected, visit us on our social media channels and our website www.artyoga.co Ci sentiamo presto! Ciao!